Malcolm Paladin. Welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you so much. Good to be here. Happy podcast day, as always. Happy podcast day. Yes. Yes, indeed. You ever sit down to do a podcast, say on like a Wednesday at 12 p.m. without Duddles for the like 250th time, and then realize you don't have any snacks or drinks? Oh, and, I, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm like, I don't have a drink. I've got about 10 seconds before I have to do the introduction. What am I to do, sir? Not enough time, I guess. Not enough time. There's not enough hours in the day. Not enough hours no. in the podcast. It's true. Should we take a synchronized 30-second break and go? Because I could use a glass of water, too, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Synchronized 30 seconds. We'll be right back. Ready, set, go. All right, I made it back before you did. I got a beer, and well, I'm gonna have to re-explain this to him when we get back. But a packet of tiny teddies. That's my snack. I'm sticking to it. Oh. These are honey flavored. Oh, welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back yourself. Hmm. Yeah. Bunk, bunk. Excellent. Got a glass of water. Everything is good in the world. Mm-hmm. Everything is good in the world. That's what I will report on the news tomorrow. Yes. Just like a big headline. Everything is good. <laughs> Nothing else. No details. <laughs> no other stories. Yeah, exactly. We good. I got a um, recommendation from the Onion uh, News Network on YouTube today, which was, is the government doing enough uh, surveillance on the schizophrenics in our country? Yeah, (laughs) I've seen that. It's so good. It's really good. It's one of those panel ones, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I think that's some of the best work they do for whatever reason are those panel discussions with like serious looking news people and just absolutely hilarious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And like the way, yeah, just the way that they write it is just so good. It's like we need schizophrenic people to know that we care about them. We can send them comforting messages via speakers implanted <laughs> in, what was it, like in their ears or something? I don't know, like in yeah. their brains. And it's like, could we get their care workers cosmetically, like surgically, cosmetically alter their faces to look like their deceased loved ones so that they feel... <laughs> <laughs> so they feel an attachment to their care. <laughs> yeah. It's all just totally like straight faced. Just like, we're really trying to help these people. And like all mm. the ideas are hilarious. Yeah. Oh man. So good. Yeah. It reminds me of that crunk on Britain video that you posted in the discord last week. I've been like, uh, binging all the crunk on Britain I can find. Oh my gosh. That's so good too. I just, Beautiful, deadpan, hilarious writing. It's, yeah, it's just very much in the tradition of, you know, comedian interviews, real scientists or like real archaeologist mm-hmm. says some insane stuff without cracking a smile and without trying to make it look like a joke. Mm-hmm. And then watching the person like their brain go, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I really like the one where she sits down to talk to a historian about uh king arthur who came a lot yeah <laughs> is it true that king arthur he came, came a, lot. a lot no no, no and I the person's like he... two three four <laughs> oh i think you mean <laughs> i think you mean camelot it, it's his kingdom his court it's where he held court camelot it's a place oh it's a place but then doesn't she go well she, yes but well, isn't yeah. it true that he also came but, a lot but do we know if he came a lot <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, the historian's face as she's like trying to turn the gears to find something to talk about without breaking character and she's like well the only evidence I have of that is that he supposedly only had one child which I guess not <laughs> <laughs> well she says like 
that he he came a lot, you know, more than average, like more than just a little teaspoonful. (laughs) 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 Oh, she's amazing. Yeah, it's great stuff. So Mm -hmm. recommend it. Just search uh, Crunk on Britain. You'll find it. Yep. Yep. I, uh, there was a one today that I saw from Kunk on Earth, which I think is an upcoming Moku series, mockumentary. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know what they're calling it. Um, where she's talking about Elvis and why they couldn't film him from the lower half because it was too dangerous. Right. Um, and she makes the insinuation that he was just naked all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and says to the interviewer, like, if they had shown him below the waist that he was just naked and it was hanging there, the people at home would have had a stroke. Like, <laughs> women would have just been stroking out. <laughs> and the interviewer breaks and starts laughing, and she's like, it's not funny. People die. People would die if they were stroking that much. <laughs> it is yeah. fantastically written, I think. Yes. And she's incredibly talented. Like, great at delivery. The writing's fantastic. The editing's fan- really good, too. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and it's crazy. It's like the one that I saw was thirty minutes of this. Mm-hmm. There like were the at least writing five episodes out of that long. I found. Yeah. Mm. So it's like you would think that this whole like, just say something hilarious in deadpan to somebody who's a serious person, like that might get old, but it doesn't. It's just like new spins and new angles on everything, and it, mm-hmm. it just keeps itself fresh the whole time. It's really impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. they have some of the people back so it's like obviously the interviewers are getting or the interviewees i guess uh are getting something out of it rather like could just be a big paycheck i suppose or their face yeah. on the telly but i mean they're on board to keep doing it <laughs> like they're in on it they're, they're having fun too i think we're not shown that typically but... right yeah that is interesting that they'd go back to someone who obviously figured out what was happening right because it's like oh like well, i'm not sitting down and have a proper discussion about the thing that i've spent probably most of my life working on as an intellectual field of study they're just here to be like was the renaissance a good com- condiment you know renaissance <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, the, oh man that reminds me of the crook on britain she's like the dinosaurs dinosaurs are so scary that humans didn't come around until they were all gone out of fear mm-hmm Yes, yes, that's how it worked. Mm-hmm. Many of the dinosaurs left today, held in these zoos, clearly in a museum, is like uh, starved yeah. and underfed, and then it pans to show just skeletons, and some of them are little more than bones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where has this show been all my life? It's amazing. I know. So good. Again, long tradition. It's like Monty Python esque. A lot of what they did was this. Mm hmm. It's just this tradition of British deadpan hilarious humor. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's very good. Recommended. 10 plus. Uh huh. Let's see. What else is going on? Uh, you, hmm. Hmm? Did you watch any of the Andor? No. It's still okay. going, isn't it? I'm waiting for it to finish. I was yes. serious yesterday. Well, not yesterday. Last week when I said I'd watch it immediately. Fair enough. Yeah, it's still going. Still going? Still good? Yes. Still good. Mm-hmm. This last episode was a little rushed, but I think still good. Okay. Yep. Uh, House of the Dragon had its series finale, finally. Oh, it did. I mean, yeah, first series, right? Yeah. Yeah. Season finale. Yeah. Um, it's good. It's still good. Uh, there were a lot of people who were suddenly upset that the guy who killed his wife is also a like abusing his new wife because they were all in love with him because he's played by Matt Smith and Matt Smith is uh, a wonderfully charming actor. Even he in is. horrible roles, you know? Well, To make him a terrible people. bastard offends people. Yeah. 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 And they were like, no, he can't hurt the queen. I think, I think, you, I think you would. It's not Matt Smith. It's a different character, you guys. You can handle this. This isn't the doctor. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, that's funny. Yeah, I don't know. I've been reading stuff about it. I'm still too mad to re- to watch it. But yeah, people are like, you know, it got me back into Game of Thrones, 
Mm-hmm. In a way that I didn't think anyone ever would again. So that's pretty cool. Huh? It's impressive. Like, there's a lot of, yeah, impressive. A lot of good stuff going on. There's some stuff that's kind of creaky. Like some of the CGI in this last episode, I've heard people not be super happy about. Um, um, I was fine with most of it. They did like the whole, a lot of it's going to take place during a storm at night. <laughs> so, right. That was it. <laughs> which there are uh, some thematic shots that look really cool because of it. Like one person is landing their dragon in a storm and then yeah. they see a like lightning flash and a silhouette of an even bigger dragon already landed and like being like, Hey, who's there? And we, of course the viewers know who this is. Right. And it's awesome. It looks cool, but it does get a little old where all of game of Thrones, this pivotal stuff happened in pitch black. You know, yeah, it's hard to see. Gets a little, a little tiring. You're having a little PTSD about the battle at Winterfell. <laughs> yep, and the uh, episode like two or three episodes ago, they did the same thing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Like pe- people, you don't. It doesn't have to be dark. I promise. You can. You can do this with good light. I promise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's <sighs> funny. Well, good, good. Wonderful stuff there. Yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, no, there was a new Chainsaw Man today, and I forgot that about it. You didn't watch the new Chainsaw Man? Until just now. I was like, what else am I watching? And then I was like, Chainsaw Man. I was like, when does that? Oh, no. <laughs> today. <laughs> today, indeed. You missed yeah. that dingy cop to feel. Oof. Oh, good for He deserves it, man. He's had a rough upbringing. Uh <laughs> I, so, you know, with the Chainsaw anime taken off and stuff, I'm seeing more like Chainsaw Man stuff just on Reddit, making it to like mm-hmm. the front page and stuff. Well. And so many people are like, yeah, power. We love power. She's great. And I'm like, does she get better? Because she's kind of just a psychopath. I'm like, maybe you're into psychopaths. I don't know, man. Maybe those are your favorite characters in anime, the ones that don't have any moral compass at all. She, but she, like, she gets a bit better in this episode. She's still pretty okay. crazy and like, oh, she's clearly, she actually is just a devil, right? Like she does devil yeah. things. It's a, there's does... a lot of like what happened to her and how she ended up in the devil hunters service. I don't remember yeah. what the public organization is called. I don't um, either, but sure that works for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So I mean, there's no humanity left, right? Uh, no, th- well, it's conflicting. Like, I don't want to spoil the episode, but it, okay. it seems like she is. But she also expressly says the way that we're shown that she actually is capable of other emotions. I- I- she's like saying that she's not. <laughs> it's saying she's not what? Like not capable. Like she like she has an ulterior motive for why she was doing this seemingly sweet act. Like. It's I a, thought it was because they were going killer. <laughs> what? No, 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 no. So, oh, there's, there's, oh, her, sorry. Her, her, back. her, her backstory. She's, she's been doing this, uh, like kind thing, and it seems kind on the surface and gives her a lot of depth as a character. She has like an emotional attachment to something the same way Denji had with Pochito. Um, yeah. And while that seems sweet, there's. She's actively also saying, well, I'm just kind of doing that for my own benefit in some other way. Whether or not she would actually do it is debatable because we don't know really the time frame on these things. Yeah. What, like, it's hard to explain without spoiling it. You'll know what I mean the moment you watch the episode. <laughs> like, you'll be like, okay. oh, okay, she was doing this to this to this, that, and this. It'll make sense. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. So that's good. I was worried about people because I'm like, you can't. It's weird to me that people would simp after just a literal like murder demon with no other depth of character than that. But, but I don't know. Like people be simping. She's <laughs> she looks like a girl and she has boobs. So like that's all we need apparently for some people. Anyway. Yeah, yeah that's good. Fair. Good. Yep. Yeah. Ugh. Internet. Good place. Good place to live. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, am, I, I am a little worried that the show is ending every episode on like step hangers. Where the ends aren't big enough to be cliffhangers, they're just little steps, and it's um, like we know what the next part of the scene is about to happen, like what should, could happen, and they're not really like cliffhangers, they're tiny little cliffhangers, and I just kind of don't like the story never really resolving on an ending beat, you know? It's like always there's like, what's the next thing that's about to happen? Because like, end of episode two, 
she like drops off that building and smashes the sea cucumber demon. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It, the, the opening scene is like the direct follow up from that. It's oh. like the rest of the public organization turns up and they have to deal with like the paperwork and all that stuff. Um, hmm. I get the feeling that this episode also ended in a way that's like, oh, so what's about to happen should just be in this. Like the resolution feels like it should be here, but it's going to be in the start of the next one. So they're like step step cliffhangers, mini cliffhangers, you know. And I'm I, I'm going to get tired of waiting for that. <laughs> I feel if it's going to keep doing it. Yeah. No, I get that. You get that. That's a weird way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Also, Alchemy's been saying they have they have written new outro music for every, every episode. Yes. Which is like. I don't feel like this is necessary at all. <laughs> I, I'm down. It's with a it. weird flex. I get okay. 30, I get 13 new songs added to my playlist, so I'm fine. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I will watch it tonight. I guess that's the plan. You do that. That is what's going to happen. Nice. Let's see what else. Uh, oh, my sister had her wedding reception last night. So she got married back in like May. <laughs> May but then okay. her well, her husband is from England, and apparently all of his family couldn't make it out here until now. Okay. For whatever reason. I don't know what they had going on, but that was it. They're like, we're gonna have a wedding here. Mm -hmm. And his family, most of his family won't be able to make that, which is like that sucks. <laughs> but then we'll do a reception in October when everybody can make it out. And so was it like planned at really short notice with the like well it's in may we started planning in march they just can't make it in two months like what happened how long were they engaged mm -hmm. for long time because okay. they were engaged before covid okay and they dated they did long distance dating and then he came to visit here and she went to visit there a few times and they did all this stuff and then they finally decided to get married after about a year and then mm -hmm. covid hit mm -hmm. and he couldn't leave okay anyway it was a whole big thing so it just put all these wrenches in their plans because he's gonna move here but like it wasn't gonna work because covid screwed everything up and then yeah so basically covid screwed it up so early 2020 mm. and now like you know in 2022 they finally were able to uh tie the knot so mm. yeah it wasn't it might have been a thing where like we're waiting on these steps mm. and then that could be months. It could be weeks. We don't know. And then bam, everything went through and we can get married. So let's do it. And so maybe that was a yeah. short notice thing, right? Maybe. maybe. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, Anyways. So was it, it, was it lovely? Did you get dressed up? I did. I wore a tie. <laughs> I'm <laughs> picturing you wearing that hoodie you're wearing right now and a tie. And that's the only thing you did differently. I honestly should have done that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, it was fine. I mean, it's the weddings are weird because it's the only time that I have both sides of my family in the same room. Mm -hmm. Like my aunts and uncles and stuff. I will visit them, mm -hmm. you know, one side and then we'll visit the other side. But they hardly ever interact unless it's at one of these things like a wedding reception. Right. So I just I saw people I haven't seen in a long time. And they're interacting with people I haven't seen them interact since, like, before COVID. It's just it's a very, very weird thing. Plus, I got a new phone number. And, like, I didn't do a good job disseminating this to people. So, they were like, I tried to call you last month. And, like, you never picked up. And I'm like, oh, right. So, here's my new phone number. <laughs> And it's a good yeah, time to awkward. get good time to spread it around. You haven't just been ignoring your entire family. You just got a new phone number. I swear, <laughs> Arnie. I definitely didn't block your number. No, not at all. Not even a little bit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man. Fair yeah. Enough. So it was nice. They're happy. Like mm -hmm. the rules for immigration for him are nuts. Like he can't work. Like he's here, but he's not allowed to work. He's not allowed to work. He can't do official like tax jobs. So he's mm -hmm. trying to find all these like online, like, you know, those websites where you can go do surveys and get like four right. bucks 
right yeah yeah so he's like trying to do that stuff to keep busy but like it sounds terrible he's donating <laughs> his blood every three weeks to get paid you know that kind of thing <laughs> right. so i don't know how long it is that he can't have a job and i don't understand why um i assume he came over on like a tourist visa of some sort if you do that you can't work you have to come over on like a working visa um, that would like, be my ex- explanation. What's he... a, what's a, I'm marrying an American visa though. Well, it's got to be different. Th- well, th- then he should apply for a green card, I imagine, right? Mm-hmm. And then that would let him work, I imagine. Okay, now I'm I from look this I'm up. from neither of their countries, so I know neither of their rules. Uh. Legally work in the United States as an immigrant. No, 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 no. no. We've reached the green section of the podcast. Yeah, and foreign nationals, they need an employee authorization document, an EAD. Mm. I know, right? Mm. Doesn't say anything about green card for work. I don't, whatever. I don't know. Maybe I'll ask him at some point. I don't really care. (laughs) Uh, Well, I mean... Surely he could just pretend he's working. He could do jobs online, but like from another country, be like, oh, yes, I am a Fiverr artist still in England. Send me your requests. And then he just pretends he's still in England. Ooh, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Is he artistic in any way? I don't know. Can he ghostwrite books? Ooh, that might be good. He was doing software stuff in England, so he's not like super artistic. He's more on the other side of things. Fiverr has like a programming um, section. Oh, he could write code people. for people. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, maybe I'll recommend that. Mm. Yeah, look at me. I get 10%. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seems fair. Man struggles yeah. to live. Man takes 10%. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I don't know that. I mean, it's not really killing him. My sister's got a pretty good job that pays well. So like she's doing all right. He just wants to keep busy. He doesn't want to be like lounging around the house, renting movies all day. Yeah, exactly. It's a great way to spend a lot of money not working. It really is. Really definitely can be. Got to be careful. So, anywho, it was nice. They're happy. Everything's great. My brother came down from Idaho. I don't see him a whole lot. He's like six hours away. Mm. Um, He came down, had a good time. Yeah, it was just nice. Just a nice, nice little evening. Mm -hmm. Took took my daughter because my sons were like wedding reception screw that and i was like i don't want to fight you guys today all right it was a real like look you're right but i kind of need you to <laughs> pretend you're not but i don't want to fight so i'll just let you stay home <laughs> like, you're old enough to look after the place exactly yeah you're not going to burn the house down i appreciate that about you yeah righto right oh. right hmm yeah, I don't know. So I booted up the Cyberpunk again because I'm trying to find the... Uh, David's apartment? Yeah, David's apartment. Did you not there. just look up a guy that says, where on the map is David's apartment? No, because I didn't want to do that. But I probably have to because I lucked out real bad yesterday. Oh, yeah? <laughs> also, I got a little bit distracted. Do you have to be done with the game for it to be there? Or is it there when you start it up? Mm. yeah i don't know either maybe that's something i should look up like maybe i'm looking for it and like the point of the game that this character is at it doesn't exist <laughs> maybe if it's an uh an old save it's not in there you have to start the game oh over and over. Uh, that would suck i don't want to do suck. that nobody wants to do that no no i'm watching my housemate no. play the game he's not playing it for the first time but he says he's gonna finish it this time and he's uh-huh. walking around and just like snapping everyone's neck from behind. Yeah. And it's effective because I'm realizing all of the enemies have horse blinders on for their vision. They um, do. And like he's dropping people like on the floor on metal railings and the person three feet in front of him cannot hear him. It's correct. It's wild. And he's unless also there. Yeah. Unless they're like what? Unless they're looking directly at you. you oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 they're correct. facing the other way, but they can't hear, like, bodies dropping. Yeah, um, correct. He's getting very frustrated with the um, quick hacks because he uses whistle a lot to pull someone away from the group when he needs to. Yeah, of course. But uh, if they're, like, up a set of stairs, they just can't hear him and it doesn't work. Like, the quick hack won't. Lower. It's not 
it's not like uh the sound doesn't travel in all directions and it only goes <laughs> forward yeah <laughs> that sounds about right for this game <laughs> that's great mm-hmm. yeah i never i don't i only ever use whistle a couple times because i was like it seems unsporting <laughs> <I'm> gonna... <laughs> <laughs> you think that seems unsporting? The only one I ever use is Suicide and Contagion. <laughs> More unsporting, yes, definitely. <laughs> Suicide's hilarious. I used Suicide on a robot the other like, last night. Oh, really? I was like, I wonder if this works because it was like a like a patrol bot, out, oh, yeah. like security bot outside someone's house, and I was like, Suicide, and yeah, the robot's like <laughs> draw <a> weapon, <laughs> <laughs> and you know. Robots, all important stuff's in their heads. Like, that's how we make robots, obviously. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Believe hilarious. It. Yeah. Yep, yep. So, I got distracted. I ended up doing Carrie's Quest, where you get the band back together and you play one last oh, gig. right. Yep. Yeah. Did you like, I, can you let um, Johnny take over for the performance? Is that the thing? You, you think you have to. I don't oh, think okay. you can do it without letting Johnny take over. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, yeah. like, you're not really a guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, V could also not really be a street kid, but she still just walks around saying Churum and Gumber or whatever the <laughs> slang is. You know? She spent three months with Jackie that one time, and, like, he totally <laughs> rubbed off on her. And, like, yeah, she went from corpo to street kid in six weeks. Yep. Yeah. It's I'm just funny because, like, let's get the band back together. You tell these people who were in the band, and every one of them's like, "Johnny's dead." And you're like, "Ah, eh, I'll play for him." And they're like, "Cool, that sounds great." And I'm like, "I don't <laughs> what? <laughs> There's no pushback at all on this." <laughs> they're just like, "Sure, we'll let uh, we'll let this random stranger stand in for the front man of our band. Arguably yeah. the leading personality and the only reason people showed up." But sure, yes. Right. Do you and know how like, to play? Not going to test it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what somebody says. It's like, well, oh, come on. You're going to replace Silverhand? And V's like, well, let's be honest. Like, Johnny was more of a, what is it, like, more of like a personality than an actual musician. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, Johnny's going to kick your ass. You can't say that. <laughs> He's here in the room. You can't just say that. <laughs> and this, the other person's like, yeah, that's fair. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Here's All right, fair enough. It stands the reason that if the the relic has um, Johnny on it, and Johnny can take over you, and then suddenly you can play the guitar. I feel like you yeah. should be able to just download guitar playing software for your robot arms, and it does it anyway. <laughs> like, not yes, not wrong. Yeah, I have literal robot arms. You are correct. They should mm-hmm. be able. There should be a Guitar Hero download for like twenty bucks. Probably, yeah. I believe it. But no. But no. Nope. No. Yeah. Like, everyone's usually pretty cool with, like... Because, you like, with Carrie, mm. uh, Johnny takes over, and Johnny's like, yo, it's me. And Carrie's like, uh, no. <laughs> no, you died, like, 50 years ago. <laughs> What's going on? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I guess I, I forgot about this. I guess he Carrie is like, what's the last thing you said to me before you died? Like the night mm. you went to go to Arasaka. And I was like, okay, that's a good thing. Yeah. That's a fair, that's a fair test. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's like, fuck this band, fuck your this isn't your scene or something. Find your own way. Yeah. Like what I exactly. remember it being. Yeah. 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 And then Carrie's like, tell me the whole story. And I'm like, no, I don't have enough time to tell you the whole story. And the game's like, cut. And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I didn't have to sit through a four hour cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I know. It's a good game. It's not what it was supposed to be, but you know, they still good. Went for the stars and hit the moon, I think is how the saying goes or whatever. It was fine. Mm. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <sighs> so I've been <sighs> trying to play a game called Potionomics. Okay. That's what I've been playing. It's a deck builder, shop manager, dating sim. Yo, that's a fun combo. That is a triple threat you should all be afraid of. Um, it's really fun. Basically, the game opens up and it's like, oh, hey, your uh, uncle died and left you um, his potion shop. 
in this really strange island. You have, like, Quark of the Island rules. You have to come and accept your inheritance in person. And then you get there, and it's like, oh, you also inherit all of his debt. <laughs> right? And it's like, right, of course. Here's, here's a magical slave contract. Pay your debt bills, or you'll become a slave for life. Um, and you are Me. one million gold, right? Which yeah. seems like a lot. And anyway, his shop is a dump, and you can just barely make the basic, like, health and mana potions. The game then puts you on, like, a 10-day loop where there's a competition every 10 days. And so every 10th day, you have to prepare these potions and take them to the competition. If you win, the first time you get, like, 10,000 gold, and then they immediately take it off you. Right? The next time, it's, like, 40,000, and they immediately take it off you. That's how you pay back your debt. But those other 10 days, you're just buying, like, brewing potions and selling them to customers, and you can make a lot of money doing this if you brew them properly. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it would be a lot better if I didn't have to engage in the competition aspect, because I feel (laughs) like I'm being forced to make the potions I don't want to make. Yeah, it's interfering with your capitalism. What's (laughs) their deal? That's a good way to put it. Um... (laughs) So that's the shop management a- aspect where you have like shelves and you can put certain potions on them and then customers come in and they want one. The deck building is you have a 20 card deck and you try to haggle bargain with the customer to raise the price. So you can play like set them up and then reel them in and it raises their interest level, which raises the price at which they're willing to pay them for. But mm-hmm. they also like stress you out. And try to like lower the price. So they'll be like, uh, you know, I thought it would look prettier. And like the price goes down by 5% and your uh, stress goes up 3%. And depending on the level of the stress, that's the percentage chance you have to draw a stress card, which like at the end of the turn is like, it would just be like, it lowers, if you still have this card in the end of your hand, it lowers the customer's patience by one at the end or something, right? Um, And so that's how you do that to like sell the potions. That's the deck builder. You relieve stress by going around and talking to people. And that's the dating sim. So there are all these other various characters like Mint, who is a hero for training and hire, I guess. And like sending her on raids with your potions so she can last longer gets you rare ingredients. Yeah. Uh, So you you can build affection and lower your stress. And that you basically do that nine days in a row selling potions taking custom orders feeling them trying to like work out new potions or like good combinations of ingredients and then you get forced into a competition yeah and you're like "Mm." yeah (laughs) so i'm a little bored (laughs) of the competition um and i'm a little overwhelmed with the number of ingredients the way the brewing works is there are like six stats on every ingredient like a b c d e and f right and yeah you have like, a, let's say one ingredient is a slime. That slime is always going to give you 6A and 6C, right? So your cauldron can hold up to like six ingredients unless you upgrade it, right? Mm. Um, and so you need to, like, if you want to make a health potion, that's A and B. You need to keep the, it's a ratio of one to one. So you need to make sure that the ingredients you put in match A and B stats one to one. They can be a little off, right? Like, depending on the ingredient. Some ingredients I have that are like, 20a 20b 4c um and i've got four pages of ingredients so far and it's like 16 Yo. ingredients on a pre- page so it's like oh i wish there was some way to just focus these down and be like these are the ones that i clearly want for these potions and like yeah knowing where i need to go to get them because the first i actually failed the first competition the first time i tried to do it because if you present a potion and the uh, other competitor potion is worth more, you go into like a haggle with the judge. So you get a chance to boost. <laughs> you, right. You get, you get a chance to boost your pro- potion's profit. But if you actually present one that's better in value by the start, um, you just win. Right? <laughs> like you just win that round and it's best of three. So if you can go in with a potion that's already better, you can win off the bat really easy. But some of the ingredients or materials you need to upgrade your equipment are a little hard to come by initially. I'm like, oh, there's this lady who lives in the woods who does carpentry, who's got like a sick wooden arm and just loves to chill out and definitely not smoke grass with you. Um, she can build your 
like uh, more shelves so you can stock more ingredients and sell more and make more money. Except right. you need to give her 500 gold, three wood, and a cactus. Don't know why. Don't know where to get the cactus. It says it comes from this zone that you can send Mint, the other lady, as a hero to go and get, but she never brings it back for me. And then I win the first uh, competition, and it's like, oh, you've raised uh, the carpentry lady's like affection in you. She'll now just sell you the things that you need. It's like, oh, okay. Uh. I needed to know that I needed to like sit down and chill out with this woman at least four times before I could just buy the upgrade materials I need from her. And so I'm wondering what else there is that's just like locked behind these. You need to date this person. Right. I, I, I don't, I think I'm at the level where uh, it's just, where we're just, we're just good friends and they're giving me discounts. We're not, I'm not dating any of them yet, but I'm sure I assume you maybe get stuck locked in on one path. Don't know that for certain. I'm not there yet. But yeah, it's friends and family discounts for people when they like you. Yeah, that's fair. It's funny because they'll give you discounts the more they like you, but they still come into your shops to buy potions and you still just sit there and try to ramp up the price. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you don't have to do it that way. <laughs> you don't have to, but there's no penalty to doing it. <laughs> that would be hilarious if they're like, dude, come on. Like, I'm giving you friends and family treatment and you're trying to haggle with me every time I come in. Mm-hmm. Yep. It happens. Somicron cares not. He's like, welcome to the world. Dude, Muttuck, this dude, like, huge, like, seal orca dude, I don't really know. He came in and was like, here's a free cauldron, babe. I'm like, sweet, free cauldron. And then he, like, wanted to buy, like, a 50 gold health potion. I think I got up to, like, 250. Like, he (laughs) (laughs) just, like, really rung him. (laughs) Wow. So you're the worst. That's good to know. true that's amazing mm-hmm. oh that's really funny it's like i do it so much nice stuff for you so you're like thanks that's wonderful give me all the gold you got <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm also uh your uncle might not be dead i have a feeling there's a twist coming where there's a talking owl in the uh like alchemist shop that like guide you he's like the tutorial guy and he says his name is Al, and I have a feeling that your uncle turned himself into an owl because one of the like loading screens or like in between scenes, the main character is like, maybe my uncle's not dead, and he's just like off somewhere gathering ingredients, waiting to be rescued. And I was like, nope, he's definitely dead. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, mm, he's just hiding it to get out of his debt. <laughs> like he's gonna yeah. put you in a slave collar, take the bail for all his debts, and then he's gonna turn. For- transform back into a human and just go back to living his life. That's what's going to happen. I'm calling it now. I could see that happening. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. Very sneaky plan. Realistic. Especially the way I treat everyone. I'm going to deserve it. So. <laughs> <laughs> when you get screwed over, you're going to be like, yeah, 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 that makes sense. That checks out. <laughs> yeah. It's real end of Seinfeld <laughs> episode kind of ending. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. That's great. Yeah, good, good comp. Way to pull that out. That '90s TV show. Good times. Great times. Hmm. Hmm. So that's what I've been playing. Excellent. I've been playing buy a new washing machine the last couple of days. Oh, what happened to your old one? So okay, so some background. I bought this used <laughs> like <laughs> ten years ago. Okay. So. It's old. It's yep. It's been a trooper though. Never had any problems with it ever at all. And mm-hmm. then the other day, I put a load in, and halfway through the cycle, it starts going, <laughs> and there's this burning smell coming from it. And I was like, mm, yes, that's the universal sign of I am dying. Please help me. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I'm sure you got a new one, one that's maybe a little more water efficient better for the planet that kind of thing oh yeah trimming Uh uh-huh sure it is yeah Mm -hmm. i went i took the back off of it and i looked at it and i was like oh (laughs) so there's this it's like a seal that protects the motor from the water that's in the washing machine right and it was just old so there were like cracks in it and like water was dripping directly onto the motor and i was like 
It's great design. Way to go, washing machine engineer from 1993. <laughs> like, come on, man. Yeah. So, like, water. I don't know how long that had been happening, right? Maybe it mm -hmm. started a year ago, and eventually it just reached a point where the motor just gave out. So, um, getting a new one. It's a Speed Queen brand. I did some research, and people seem to really like. Never heard of it. <laughs> yep. Yep. You know, I hadn't heard of it too until like this week. So, mm, fair enough. Fair enough. We'll see how it is. They'll come deliver the new one and haul the old one away, and like that's all I ever wanted. So, oh, you um, haven't got it yet. Happy camper. No, it's supposed to come on Thursday. A couple ah. days. Yeah. Fair yeah, enough. but nothing makes you feel more old than buying a new appliance. It seems. <laughs> I'm um, trying to think what else makes you feel older. What makes you feel older than buying a new appliance? Being excited to use it. Ooh, yeah. Like, yeah. It, feeling it like it's Christmas Day when the washing machine is delivered. Right, being excited that it's got some feature that the old one didn't have. Like, ooh, this one can also tumble dry at the same time. Like, that's impressive. While it's washing, what well, wonders will they think of next? <laughs> I don't mean, like, at the same time water's in it. I mean, like, it, like, drains and then it immediately starts tumble drying. Like, Oh, holy crap. Someone's got to have tried that before. I would assume so. I don't. But I bet it so. never works. Yeah. Combination washer dryer. All in one washer dryers at Lowe's. It says. Oh. Let's see. Lowe's. Three stars. Three stars. Three stars. One star. Two stars. <laughs> so they. So they got them. Kinda. <laughs> kinda. <Yeah. laughs> Look, if you're if you're in a bind for space in your house, you could, but just go to a laundry mat. <laughs> Keep in mind, it's not going to be as good. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Renting an apartment, the landlord who landlord who installed this just before we moved in, we thought, great, a washer and dryer in one. Turns out, this is a horrible product. The wash cycles are super loud and shake the whole place up. The dry cycles take three hours, and the clothes still aren't dry at the end. <laughs> it's impressive. Never use this product with a pet. It does not elaborate on this. <laughs> Did someone try to wash their pet and then dry them in the washer dryer combo? Don't do that. To like, your pets, it doesn't people. work. <laughs> don't do that, people. Don't don't put your pets in any appliances. Uh, zero appliances specified in the instruction manual. Uh, what instruction manual? The pet instruction manual? No, 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 no. Like the the like a dog grooming machine. I'm sure there's something like that exists. Oh, yeah, I guess so. I thought about that. Oh man, these are hilarious. Yeah, I get it. It washes and dries all in one. I was so excited about this. I knew it would take a bit longer and pull more power, but I never dreamed six to eight hours per load would be what I was facing. Oh, oh my what? gosh. Six it, to eight hours per load. So a wash and a dry cycle is six to eight hours. And it says it doesn't dry well. There's lint and water at the bottom of the door when I have to drag my clothes out. I tried washing and drying a blanket in it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yes. Okay. That's a product. That is a product you could spend money on, Falcon. A hundred percent. So that's, that's good. That's one of those things where I expected it. To be something that was being tried, but it wasn't working well because I never heard about it. Exactly what's going on. Yeah, exactly what's happening. Yeah. Whirlpool is like, we can make this work. And everyone's like, okay. And then it does not work. So I don't know. Maybe like the eighth revision, they'll get it figured out. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Anything is possible if you just believe. I don't think that's how it works, but you know, belief doesn't hurt, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> suppose not. <laughs> oh, I suppose not. Suppose not. Lex in the Discord server today made the point that so the four minute mile used to be believed to be impossible for a human to run. Mm -hmm. Like if a human ran a mile in under, under four minutes, then like people thought their heart would explode. It's very similar to people thinking that if women got on trains, then their uteruses would like disintegrate. There were a lot of weird <laughs> ideas around yeah. this time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so there was no one ever broke the four minute mile. There were all these, you know, four tens and four twenties and four thirties. And then someone did it and then, oh, his heart didn't explode. And then suddenly everyone believed they could. And bam, there were hundreds of people breaking the four minute mile very soon afterward. Right. So 
yeah, there is some power, uh, some power for for belief. But mm-hmm. you know, it's not all you have to do. You still have to work your butt off if you want to run a four minute mile. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Turns out uh, the mile record uh, in sixty five years since it's been done. Um, has the 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 record's been lowered by seventeen seconds, so it stands at three minutes forty three seconds and thirteen milliseconds. So, uh, you can run a mile in you know under four minutes, not easily, but people are like smashing the record. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's still imp- a four minute mile is still like dead impressive, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's not, not impossible, which is the nice thing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you hear about the guy? I don't know if we talked about this last week. The guy who ran like 4,000 kilometers across Australia last week. No, that sounds insane. Is this person insane? Yeah. Maybe. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. The, guy, the guy's like 23 or something. He looks 40 now. He ran 4,000 kilometers across. I think he started in Perth or somewhere in Western Australia and ran to Bondi yeah. Beach in Sydney. Holy smokes. Yeah. Um, by the time he got there, uh, he was in so much pain, apparently, um, because his arms were basically like locked in like a running pose because that's all he'd been doing. Uh, uh-huh. it, took, it took him 40 days uh, to, and, like- to run that far. And he had maggots oh. living in blisters in his feet. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then he got there and did a shoey. Hopefully with someone else's shoe. Did you say he did a shoey? A shoey, yeah. Traditional the hell shoey. is that? It's you can't Australian. just drop. You don't know what a shoey is? You're just dropping Australian slang on me. Like, I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, a shoey is where you take your shoe... And then you pour typically a beer into it, and then you drink the beer from the shoe. Oh. Yep, I would not have guessed that. Okay, cool. <laughs> did a shoe with someone else's shoe. Wonderful. Ho- hopefully, someone else's. I cannot confirm. And he did oh. it with champagne. Uh, he did this to raise money for homelessness, uh, specific programs in somewhere. No, he's not just. In her, uh, for homelessness, vague quotation marks. Uh, there was a specific organization that I can't remember, and he raised 1.6 million, I want to say. So good for him. Good for. Wow, him. yeah. yeah. Maggots are happy. So wait, hold on. So you got maggots on the blisters on his feet, which are on the bottom of his feet. Was he just like squishing the maggots? They're just getting crushed to death as he ran? Pretty How does that even make any sense? That's crazy. It's just padding at that point. <laughs> Ooh, this is soft. <laughs> squish, squish, squish. Yeah, pretty much. That's disgusting. Holy oh, yeah. smoke! Yeah. So, mm. I actually read a story the other day about similar thing, like one of the first ultra marathoners. Mm. Uh, the ultra marathons invented because society reached a point where we're like, we're just going to run twenty plus miles for fun, right? Instead of like we're running twenty plus miles so we can eat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so this farmer enters it where he ran a sheep farm, a sheep ranch mm-hmm. that was like three square miles and he didn't have a horse. Oh, okay. So like to gather the sheep, he would run out there and gather them. And sometimes it would take like two days to find them all and herd them all back up. So he was like, sure, I, I, I can run real good. So he did it. And he took like second place in this ultra marathon. And people are like, so how? And he explained how. And like he just had this really kind of dumb looking shuffle motion. Like he's running, but not like sprinting by any means, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it just form. Yeah, it just like conserved energy real well and it was a decent speed, but it was this nice like in between. And it actually influenced people's running motions for future ultra marathons because they're like, hey, this worked real well. So is it more like a power walk stance? Yeah, it's definitely closer to like a power walk than a jog. Mm -hmm. And not even close to a run. (laughs) Well, that's the key. Consistency (laughs) over like sprint efficiency. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. You know what I mean, though. I do. Yeah. yeah. And when your distances are that long, that's what matters. It's that's tortoise and the hair type stuff. Sprinting right. 
speed is irrelevant once you get to the miles part of racing. It's really weird that but that's still the analogy that tutors the tortoise and the hare because <laughs> the tortoise won, but not because the hare like got tied because he sprint like 95% of the way. Mm. It's, he was arrogant. He just, he was like at the finish line and just said, I'm going to stop. It's like if he just wasn't arrogant and had crossed the finish line, he would have won. It's a good point. It's, it's a <laughs> warning against arrogance, not a warning against like long distance sp- braces are bad for sprinters like that's not the intent at all no <laughs> good point hmm. yeah it's not about like endurance on like stick to itiveness like the poor turtle was so slow but he just stuck it stuck to his guns and kept going well, that's part of it because well, if mean, he'd given up then the hair would have won he couldn't give up he still had to stick with it yeah i suppose but it's like yeah. stick with it and hope the people that are far more prepared to win just don't you know (laughs) that's how it works sometimes like i've been told like a lot of keeping your job is just showing up Mm. yeah because it's like the people that don't show up guess what you beat them out way to go just by showing up Mm -hmm. it happens yeah okay yeah that's true yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) oh And oh, so in other news, did we talk about the Brittany Griner thing in Russia, the basketball player? No. Have you heard anything about this? No. So, like six months ago, maybe even more than that, right? So, I don't think the Russia Ukraine war has started officially yet, but Russia's like on the list of like, maybe you shouldn't go there places for the US State Department, right? They're right. kind of gearing up. Mm-hmm. So, Brittany, Brittany Griner is a WNBA player and she like a lot of other WNBA players plays overseas to augment the money they get because they don't get paid a whole lot. Right. So she was playing in Russia. So she shows up and customs goes through her luggage and they find a vial of CBD oil Mm. that wasn't even like full. It was like a tiny bit. Right. Right. And they busted her for drug trafficking. (laughs) They dump her in a jail cell and they're like, we're going to try you for trying to smuggle drugs into the glorious Republic of Russia, right? Right. right. And then this war breaks out. So now U.S.-Russia relations are garbage. Right. And there's all this talk about like trying to put pressure on Russia to release her. Uh, Russia's demanding we give them like this incredibly proficient um, weapons trader <laughs> in exchange. And America's like, ah, uh. <laughs> so this guy is responsible for a lot of death. It's right. what is it? Nick, there was, they made a movie about this guy. I Nicholas. Man. Nope. Nicholas Cage, Lord of war. Okay. A 2005 movie about this dude so that's like that's how rough he is Viktor Antonalievich right he's a former Soviet officer and once the USSR collapsed he just like goes around the world and facilitates uh, arms transfers and Mm. to help countries make war right so we capture him and he's in a US prison and Russia was like give him back and we'll give you this basketball player and we were like nope so the reason I'm bringing this up is because today she was sentenced to nine years in a Russian penal colony for officially drug trafficking. And it's a totally trumped up, really stupid, bad charge. And I think she just caught up, got caught up. Wrong place, wrong time. I'm pretty sure she just forgot that vial was in her luggage at all. Because mm-hmm. it didn't sound like it was enough that she was planning on smoking it at all later, you know? Right. Uh, um, but then she gets caught up and all of a sudden this war breaks out and US Russia relations are at the worst point they've been in the last 20 years mm-hmm. and now she, she's going to spend her 30s in a Russian prison it's a really terrible terrible story mm-hmm. that's, uh, whew, that's a bummer it's real down thanks for telling me that yeah uh, so the moral of the story is uh, don't go to places that check, are not friendly check. with your home country. Check what's in your bag before you fly. That too. Just don't bring drugs to other countries by accident or otherwise. It seems yeah. like a terrible idea. Yeah. Yeah. Don't play basketball in Russia. Yeah. Go somewhere else. 
Surely they yeah, have like Spain. basketball elsewhere. Spain? Spain yeah. has basketball? Spain has good basketball, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's that's rough. Uh-huh. That. Yep. Well, uh lessons learned sometimes sometimes are rough. Yep. Yeah. All right. Oh, <laughs> uh, shoot. We need to end that on you a positive on note. You want to end on that? Mm. No. So there. Ooh. So they announced a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, which they're going to release on American Thanksgiving next month. What? Yeah. Exactly. Here, let me send you a tweet real quick. It can't be good. Yeah. Calling it the holiday special is sort of like inviting. Just and brings back like some problems. Yeah, brings back bad mo- of mojo. Yeah. Yeah. Why? I'm just wondering like, why. Why the guy in the galaxy for this? Like they're in space. When? When is holidays in space? Um. Right. I don't know. Kevin Bacon's in it apparently. I, I don't. That's I, weird. I, Does he play Kevin Bacon? Because they talk about Kevin Bacon in the first Guardians, don't they? I think it has to be. I think it has to be Star Lord meeting Kevin Bacon and being like, ah, oh, <laughs> like you were my hero in 1986. That's weird. Yeah. Oh, this tweet says the Guardians decide to meet Kevin Bacon as a way to give Star Lord some holiday cheer as he's um... mourning the loss of Gamora. Yeah, fair. Ah, uh, Gamora still not showing up in anything. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's... Gamora was Kevin Bacon the whole time. <laughs> well, it's a weird... Like, what they did with Gamora is so weird, because they kill her in our original timeline. Mm-hmm. And then they bring her back with 2012 Thanos at the end of Endgame. Mm-hmm. And then Thanos gets destroyed, and his arm is defeated, but, like, Gamora's alive... And then she kicks Chris Pratt in the nuts and storms away. Yeah. I mean, that's the last time we've seen her. Like, what is she doing? Sitting around Earth, not having a spaceship. Right. Like, do, did they put her in prison? <laughs> nah, she's cosplaying She-Hulk. <laughs> she goes to parties as She-Hulk. <laughs> in conventions. Yeah, that's what like, she this is the easiest costume ever. <laughs> I'm already green. I got the hair. I like to punch people. Um, yep. <laughs> Head cannon. She just has yeah. to wear like platforms, so she's a little taller, but I think she's got it nailed otherwise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh my I really want that to be what's happening at this point. Like I think that's the best outcome for her. Yeah. Put away her she's put away her murderous universe conquering ways. Cause <laughs> Uh Gee, Gamora. Hey, what's up, Duddles? How's it going, man? How you doing, buddy? Well, good for you to show up as we're ending the show. Yeah, real nice of you to show up right as we're done with the show. We haven't been waiting for you for two podcasts now or anything. Yeah. No, nope, yeah. not at all. Not at all. And showing up literally after the pod should be over, you know. Mm-hmm. Only two months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's cool. It's cool. You don't know when we do the podcast, and you don't want to hang out with us on the podcast. We understand. It's all right. We get it. Doodles is really yeah. bad. He doesn't know how to use a calendar. He tries to read them right to left, up to down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Texan. I think Texans try that. It doesn't right. work out usually. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I always send him the calendar invites in Australian format, so maybe that's why. Mm. Mm. And True, all- true. You know, as you know, I'm a radical. All of my calendars are metric weeks, so they're 10-day long. It's very confusing for poor Duddles. Right. As an American, you just can't make heads or tails of it. And honestly, I can't either, so I'm with you there, Duddles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Let's wrap this thing up. Let's wrap it up mm-hmm. now that we've made fun of our good friend for a minute now. Yeah, I think that's a good good way to go. All right, so that's going to be it from us. This has been Falcon Paladin and Somicron and not Duddles with another edition of the Falcon Paladin Hour. We stream this live at twitch.tv slash Somicron. 
every week on Tuesday in the United States and on Wednesday, if you happen to be in Australia or like Japan or something like that. Mm -hmm. You can also find the VODs out on YouTube uh, over at Somicron's personal YouTube channel there. It's true. Forget how to spell the URL, but just search Falcon Paladin Hour. It will come up. I've done this before. I, I don't have a custom URL. Uh, handles are oh, coming. You don't have it. No, oh, yeah, that's one. right. Uh, custom handles are coming. I might be able to get one then. I keep like checking and they're like, no, not for you yet. Not for YouTube you yet. keeps being like, choose a handle. And I'm like, I did last week. And like, choose a handle. And I click the thing and it's like, here's your hand. I'm like, yes, I know. I'm the one who chose this. Leave me alone. Did it give you a good handle or was it like Falcon Paladin's page? No, I chose it. I oh, have chose- Falcon Paladin and I have Falcon Paladin SC2. Ah, Done. Okay. Done. Easy, boring, peasy. <laughs> you can support the podcast directly at patreon.com slash somicron and also at our merch store at falconpaladin.store. We have hoodies out there. We have two separate models of hoodie. And we have Sook t-shirts. If you have any idea what that means, you're in a very small group of people that knows what it is. Uh, come, so you should get the shirt so you can feel special. Yeah, come to the Discord to learn about sooking. It is not the Australian word for sook, which is to like throw a temper tantrum, but it's something entirely different. Oh, I did not know it was all... I think we might have talked about this when it first came up. Yeah, we've talked about it. Anyway, cool. That's going to be it from us. Hang out with us next time. You can find the podcast on anywhere you get your podcasts on your podcast apps as well. So... Until then, have a fantastic day. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And you take care of yourself.